Do you have any advice on how to, to see the oneness? Okay, the question is, is there any advice on how to see the oneness? You might say that, that the perceptual problem of this world is based on duality, and duality and oneness don't go together. Uh, the most basic dualistic split is not between the things of the world. It's between a perceiver and a perceived world. It seems like in the human condition that as a human being you perceive a world that's outside of you. So you have five senses and that there's a world that surrounds you. In order to see the oneness, what happens is that that split has to get corrected. So you know how people tell you that there's beautiful teachings now. Uh, some of you might have heard of the Four Agreements. Uh, one of the Four Agreements is just don't take things personally. Well, it can seem easier said than done, but the whole ego, which is what the error is, is taking everything personally. So, in order to see the oneness, you simply have to learn how to get so aligned with the spirit and so detached from the world that you simply don't take anything personally. To give you a, a concrete example, a, a number of years ago, some friends of mine who were course students, they decided to they decided to take a vacation and fly off to somewhere and leave their kids with me. Um, and so I went to the house and uh, oh, did we have fun. Uh, uh, Mom and Dad were gone, and so they said uh, we went to McDonald's like uh, seven nights. Every night we went to McDonald's. I say, say where do you want to eat? McDonald's, Mickey D's. Next night, where do you want to eat? McDonald's. <laughs> we went in the living room. We they had all the furniture arranged very neat and everything. And they said, you know, mom and dad never let us touch the furniture. We want to we want to make play house. We want to make forts and everything. So we had we got the sheets out. We turned the living room, you know, into like a, a jungle gym and this and that. And as, as you will find with, with children, they always try to test your boundaries, you know, to see how far you, they can go. They couldn't find any boundaries with me. Uh, they kept, ooh, this is fun, this guy is fun. In fact, they got, they got so happy being around me that week that at one point they were like giddy with laughter, uh, just in a state of pure glee and joy of childhood, squealing with delight. Uh, and at one point, in this squealing state of delight, uh, they looked at each other, and one of them, I think it was uh, uh, the little girl, Mandy, she, she, uh, she spit. And, and I'm in this state of, of perfect detachment, so I can see the, the spitball coming through the air. And it lands in my beard. But I, when you're in the observer state, you don't even take spitting personally. Troy, <laughs> um, but I think he was a little upset when they said But I was in such a state of detachment that, that as soon as it landed and I didn't scream or holler or make a statement, they just went through it and turned into a little spit test. <laughs> because, and, and what I, I share that story is because when we really relax and we get into our innocence, and it's called like innocence, we, it's, it's like contagious, you know. Uh, people like to be around you when you're not judging them. You ever notice that? When you're, when you're just loving and innocent and accepted, then people come around you and they just like to hang around. And that's an answer to your question that, that the only way to really see the oneness is just to go so deep in your mind and do such a, a transformation and let your trust level come up that what you find is you reach a state of mind where you don't take anything personally. And that's really what the oneness is about. Uh, in the Bible it even says, God is no respecter of persons. <laughs> so the Four Agreements got an early start back there, way back in the Bible. And in answer to your question, that's really what this is about. Letting your trust level, your faith climb so high that you don't become defensive and you don't take things personally. Regardless of what's happening, uh, and people who know me, uh, we even had a, a windstorm uh, about a month or two ago, and um, I, I know, so I don't even have uh, like collision car insurance or comprehensive everything. 
a big branch that came down from my neighbor's tree and, and smashed onto the house and then onto this car, put this big dent on the hood of the car. So they sent me out to investigate. And I came back in to the house and I said, our Lancer has been lanced. And uh, what else are you going to do? I mean, you're going to shake your fist at the tree, you know. All things work together for good. It's a state of mind where you just don't take anything personally and you don't get caught up into appearances and whatever. And that allows you to extend a lot of love and light and joy. You're not gullible because you're, you're invulnerable. You can't be gullible and invulnerable. Uh, when you're really in the state of mind training, when you really have let go of all these concepts and everything, you feel a connection and oneness with everything, and you really trust that all things work together for good. Your question? Well, since we're at the Bun Center, I uh, was talking about oneness, and I know that you know the power of our mind and the differences that right now control levels of duality. And if we're able to change that belief system into the oneness you're talking about, of course, that would, uh, that's where the transformation comes. You talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, this is. He just said some things. He said, "Judge not, lest you be judged." And it was, he was just talking about the basic thing: law of karma. As you sow, so shall you reap. You know, it's been said in many different cultures, in many different traditions. Um, I would call it forgiveness. Uh, when you really, really learn to forgive, you are completely invulnerable, and. Forgiveness, what you're talking about, uh, Lenny, is that, that this transformation of consciousness is when you really start to see that forgiveness is always a gift to yourself. Because you're really not forgiving anything or anyone. All you're doing is you're releasing the misperceptions and the obstacles from your own mind. And that's wonderful. So it's not like when you let go of a grievance that uh, you're really doing it for somebody else. It's actually, you're being very loving to yourself by letting go of that grievance. Uh, peace and grievances don't go together. And so the more you get into this joy of letting go of the grievances and the judgments, you really figure out that it, everything works out great. The grievances didn't, didn't get, help you with a bit, you know, it was always there were negative thoughts. There were these judgmental thoughts that you were lugging around. So I was sharing a little bit yesterday at the gathering that in this world people are very concerned about things like diet and exercise and um, all kinds of things that I would call form things. And what Jesus taught 2,000 years ago, it's not what you put in your mouth that defiles, it's what proceeds forth from the heart. Um, Years ago, um, uh, my biological parents were looking at me and uh, 